G'day and welcome back to the channel. Today we are working with this footage here, Blackmagic Pocket 4K shot in Brewer. I shot this a couple of years ago. The other thing is, it's very underexposed, so that's gonna be quite a little problem, but we'll do the best we can. So today we're gonna to be working in DaVinci Resolve Studio. We will be making a grade using the free version Resolve, so don't stress there. So the first thing we wanna do is come to our color management. So just this little cog, so just this little cog down here. Color management. I'm working in Color Science, DaVinci YRGB, Timeline Color Space, Rec 709, Gamma 2.4, Apple Color Space, same as Timeline. So just click Save when you've done that. Now let's make two more nodes, so Alt S a couple of times to make two serial nodes. Then in our first one, let's go to Effects, Color Space Transform. If you can't find it, you just type Color up here. Bring it onto your first node. Now, because we're working in Blackmagic Pocket, we wanna be in, for me, Blackmagic Design Pocket 4K Film Gen 4. This was shot on Gen 4, so that's why we're working in Gen 4. Now for our input gamma, we wanna be in Blackmagic Design Film. As you can see, we already have a very nice starting point. So we skipped all those things that we'd normally do. Now what we wanna do is today we're gonna to be working with a Kodak Film LUT. So again, color space transform. Now to properly apply a Kodak Film LUT, you wanna be in Cineon Film Log. That is the correct parameters for your film LUT to work properly. You don't just chuck it on, as I see many people do. Now in our third node, let's go across to LUTs and let's select Rec 709 Kodak 2383D65, quite the long name. Now as you can see, we already have a nice starting point. So what we're gonna do now is you always wanna work before your transform node and before your LUT. With this one highlighted, Shift S to bring up a serial before that. If you don't know how to do that, or you don't use the shortcut keys, just color nodes, add serial before current. Now we're gonna make one after that. We're gonna turn this one into a layer node. So Alt L, this is gonna be our skin node. Then we're gonna make another one, Alt S again. Let's make this across a little bit further. So on this one highlighted, make two more parallel nodes, Alt P. And again, if you don't know the shortcut, color nodes. Parallel node. So in our first one, let's see if we can bring some of these shadows back. I think it's okay. Look, there's no real detail there in the first place, so it's not a big deal. So let's bring our gamma down a little bit. So we'll call this one exposure. We haven't really done anything, but that's fine. Now, we're gonna do our skin tones early to save us the hassle of trying to key them later on when we have all these color effects going on. So now we're gonna use a 3D qualifier. So you come down to qualify here and then come over to here, which is your 3D qualifier. So it's a qualifier with a couple of lines sticking out of it for some reason. And then holding your left mouse button, just drag across. Okay, now shift H to bring up your selection or magic wand up here. Now, as you can see, we have a lot of noise here in the background. What we're gonna do we're actually gonna expand our key. And that's gonna give us a lot of stuff in the background, but that's okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a power window over this guy's face. Go back to our key and let's see if we can just try and soften this up a fair bit. Otherwise we're gonna have a weird halo effect over his face. Nobody wants that. He's not the son of God. So, Okay, now we're getting a better key. Good old morph radius for the win. And let's blur it right out a fair bit. Looks like we have a pretty good key. Now we're gonna have to key out his hand, which is fine. But all in all, I think that's a great key. So now what we're gonna do now is we're gonna track this. And I'm gonna use not the clip track, which means DaVinci Resolve will automatically track it for me because I know it's gonna do a bad job. I'm gonna use frame tracking. Now I'm gonna do it and then just skip ahead because it's gonna be a long, boring process and nobody wants to watch that, nor do I actually wanna do it, but it is what it is and we need to do it. All right, playing through our footage, we look like we have a pretty good track. We can always come back and finesse this, but it looks pretty good for now. Let's just bring our exposure down just a little bit, I think. Looks quite nice. Now in this note here, we're gonna call this one look. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to my offset and I'm just gonna move it around until I find something I like. Now I think around 
some greeny areas will look more suited for this scene. If we go greeny blue, we'll be able to bring up this blue a little bit more. And then we can move away from that ugly magenta -y look the wall has. So something like that looks pretty good. So in this node here, we'll call it contrast. We'll do a contrast curve. So let's go to our curves and using our edible splines. So three little dots, edible splines. Make a point by clicking here. Now we have a nice little soft curve we can do. Something like that. And again, pick up the top. Bring this down. Actually bring it up, sorry. That looks pretty good. Now in this node here, we're going to call this one wall. And we're going to blur out this wall because it's quite ugly and for some reason it's very sharp. So we're going to be using a gradient power window. So shift H will bring up your selection or the magic wand. Now let's go to blur and sharpen, which is just over here. Bringing it up will soften your selection. So that looks really good. Alrighty, I think our scene looks quite good, except I feel like our skin tones a little bit off. So what we can do is because we qualified our skin tones earlier on with this node, we can use this little square here and connect it to this little triangle here. Now this node is feeding into this node here, but we want to do the reverse. What we want to do is come to our look here and then come to our key and we want to reverse that key. So come over here to key input, click this. Now our skin tones are separated to our look. And as you can see, they look really bad. So what we need to do is blend them in to the rest of the scene. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come to our offset and I'm just gonna bring it down towards the greeny blue, just slightly. You wanna be avoiding the reddy yellow. It's not about these skin tones looking amazing, it's about them fitting the scene. Let's have a look at that. Let's go full screen. So they look pretty good, except they look a little bright here. So in our curve, let's just bring that down ever so slightly. And then come across here. That works for me. That looks a lot better. We might have to do this part here. Maybe just bring this across here just a little bit. Yeah, that looks quite good. Okay, so these skin tones now are fitting the scene a lot better than what they did before. So we'll just fix this area up here. Uh, I'll have to track it. So again, I'll just skip ahead. So now that I've tracked this area here, what I did is use another power window and then just did frame by frame tracking, as you can see, to bring this area in. Because if you don't have this on, it looks a little wonky. So now this really blends in. So all this nicely blends in. So now we have a nice separation from foreground, midground, and background. So this blue, He's doing a nice job separating from this color here and these skin tones are a nice separation from this wall here and again we've blurred this wall out so our tension is solely on this guy here this image looks really good I'm really happy with it um, again it is quite underexposed but we've really sort of just crushed it down normally i don't like to bring those shadows down so much but if you look at our initial scene it's basically just a whole bunch of noise so we've gone from this look here do this look here and it wasn't that many steps it's just about having the right setup in terms of color space transforms and the right settings when you start your project and using the LUT in a correct way not just putting it on so I hope you enjoyed this video again you can download the footage there will be a link below thanks for watching if anything you want to say leave a comment below much appreciated for liking and subscribing and I've been Drew from Gringo Productions and have a great day